there, YouTubers? It is Don from Sure Cable coming back at you again. And this time we're going to talk about patch cable quality, specifically what a quality patch cord is. We're going to highlight what the issues are currently in the market with patch cords. We've got the True Cable patch cord, which we're going to be testing on our Fluke DSX 8000 using patch cord testing. And we're going to be comparing them against various manufacturers patch cords in the market. In fact, we've got about seven or eight of them, even a so-called Cat7 patch cord. So it's going to be pretty exciting because we're going to line up the results and show you what a quality patch cord is versus not a quality patch cord and what things can go wrong in your network if you opt to use low quality patch cords. And the problem is far more pervasive and severe than you might think. So we're going to kind of blow the lid off this and I'm going to get into some very detailed results and we're going to get some proof going and you're going to see for yourself. So stick around. You, this is one you do not want to miss. Be right back. <music> Okay, thanks for joining me again. We're going to talk about some patch cord performance comparisons. I'm going to show you the differences in quality that you're going to come across out there. And I'm going to compare a number of patch cords that are commonly available in the market. Some of them are out of their packages because it would have been too easy to identify who they were made by. And some of them I was able to blank out or keep in just their generic bag. Just so you understood though that you know, I haven't even tested this yet, so there's nothing funny going on here. Oh, one more thing. Notice this nice little zipper lock bag here that True Cable uses? Getting sick of these things where you rip them open, you gotta throw away the bag. Not reusable at all. Here's a Category 6 patch cord test, and this is a Fluke DSX-8000. And this is a, the device that is necessary to certify patch cords. Here it is. That's a very bad noise. That means that the cable failed. And that particular patch cord, not our brand, did in fact just fail that test. It failed crosstalk by 9.8 dB. Now, what could that do to your overall communications channel? Well, I can guarantee you that if you were to plug this particular patch cord into an overall solid copper permanent link with two patch cords on either side. And then you went and plugged in this patch cord, your entire communications channel would fail channel testing. And that's real bad because that's when you get bad packets. Also, just using the patch cord by itself from one powered piece of equipment to another, that performance is so bad that you may have dropped packets. You may not know about it. It may look like it's okay. You could even do a channel test on this patch cord and it would probably pass because you loosened up the parameters for the testing. So when you do patch cord testing and you want to be sure of quality, you have to do the appropriate Category 6 patch cord test. And the way you can tell if a manufacturer is using the proper test is are they using these DSX PC whatever adapters, either PC 5E, 6, or 6A? As long as that adapter is being used, the flute device will force you into using the correct test. You can't just simply use the right adapter and then use the wrong test. So it requires you to do it the right way every time. There's no way around it. So that patch cord, bad. So let's do another patch cord. Let's hear how this goes. 75% of the patch cords out there are bad, and we're about to find out. That little ding ding means that I recognize that I plugged in a patch cord. Ooh. Okay, there's that sound again. All right, so this one minus 11 dB on crosstalk. And oh, also minus 5.9 dB on return loss. Those are the two parameters that are measured in a patch cord test. This one's so bad, it might be usable for, I don't know, um, anybody need a clothesline? That's just horrible. Um, get off my table. Oh yeah, this is a so-called Cat 8 patch cable. Will it even pass a Cat 6 specs? Let's find out. So first of all, I'd like to note that Cat 8 is probably not really a very usable category. And there's some fiber optic videos that get into why that is, but Let's just see if this so-called CAT-8 patch cord passes even at CAT-6 speeds or 
performance metrics. This should be interesting. Oh, okay, that really hurts. Okay, that's painful. This Cat 8 patch cord literally just failed Cat 6 patch cord testing. I can't even begin to describe to you how many degrees of bad that is. So how bad did it fail? It failed return loss by 0.2 dB. Okay, so it was better than previous examples because gee, I mean, it was a Cat 8 patch cord. It should be able to do a little better, right? But it still failed a Cat 6 patch cord test. The so-called $15 Cat 8 patch cord. Cat 8. No, it's not. All right, so have you ever wondered how flat patch cords perform in the field? We're about to find it. This is a Cat 6 one. Obviously, I haven't tested it at all because I just took it out of its one-use bag. Plugged in. we got a marginal pass. Okay, so essentially what that means is the tester is not entirely sure whether it passed or failed. It's within the resolution accuracy of the tester. Most installers would consider a marginal pass to be in fact a failure. And if you're working to a contract, if you see a marginal pass, that in fact would be considered to be a fail. It failed on crosstalk, it's very, very low, 0.4 dB. So it's getting to the point to where the tester isn't sure whether it's good or not. But interesting, though, that this flat Cat 6 patch cord outperformed that uh, so-called Cat 8 patch cord, doesn't it? Okay, so here's another one. Let's see what happens here. Again, one I haven't opened because I'm opening up the single-use bag here. But at least they used uh, pretty blue twist ties. Maybe that'll improve their performance metrics. Let's see what it does. Oh, boom, oh, okay, another fail. So this cat, so-called Cat6 patch cord failed crosstalk by 2.9 dB and it marginally passed at 0.4 dB on the return loss. So an absolute hard fail. So far, things aren't going too well for all these patch cords. And again, these are all patch cords that are commonly available on the market. <music> Maybe you had trouble with a patch cord in the past and you have no idea why, or maybe you had some unusual communications problems in your network and you weren't able to really run it down. Well, you probably didn't have a $13,000 Fluke DSX 8000 plus $1,200 adapters in order to run it down. So let's see if this patch cord passes. Now this is a so-called Cat 7 patch cord. Let's see if it passes on Cat 6. By the way, we're also gonna talk a little bit more about so-called Cat 7 patch cords in just a moment. We're testing it, and it passed, a full pass. So, believe it or not, we've got one pass, but it had an easy test. It passed at Cat6, it's, so it's a so-called Cat7 patch cord. So we've tested how many patch cords so far, and we had a marginal pass, which is technically a fail, and one actual pass on our competitor's patch cords. So that's the state of the patch cord market. And when developing all patch cords, I went through a lot of listening to that fail sound and finally getting to consistent passes. So let's do a true cable patch cord. Now one thing about the true cable patch cord, let's plug this in and test it. Hundred percent pass and it passes very well. Two point four dB crosstalk value and three point two dB on return loss. So solid pass. The main thing with our patch cords, with true cable patch cords, is that every single patch cord you buy from us is required to generate that green pass, nice solid pass, prior to them getting bagged up. They're all 100% certified in the factory. That's what separates us. It's possible to test like a pack of 10 patch cords from a manufacturer that we're, you know, not us, and have eight out of the 10 hard fail and maybe one marginal pass and maybe one pass or maybe they're all hard fail it's hard to tell the reason why is because there are manufacturers out there that are doing what's called percentage testing and that doesn't work when it comes to patch cords because each patch cord is its own individual installation you've got two terminations and you've got a cable 
Now, if you're percentage testing, let's say, a spool of cable that you've sectioned up, then it's reasonable to say that one section of the cable is probably fine if one section passes. The rest of the sections in the same spool of cable are probably fine. That, that's a reasonable thing to say. But the second you introduce two terminations, two mechanical terminations on the end, now all of a sudden, it's not reasonable to say that you can test 10% and the other 50% or 90% are going to be okay. That is not okay. That's not how you test. So that's why we 100% certify and patch cord test our patch cords. And this just illustrates what we're talking about. So like what weird problems can you run into? Well, I had a situation occur where I had a fully certified solid copper permanent link. I had a fully PCA passing patch cord at one end. And then I one day just plugged in a patch cord that I just happened to grab and it was purchased from a big box store and I plugged it in. And within a day, I started noticing thousands and even hundreds of thousands of packet drops. And it was on a relatively regular interval. The patch core was building up capacitance on the actual conductors and it was discharging ever so often and causing massive packet loss. Now, had I not had a DSX 8000 around to run that down, I would have been guessing. And you certainly would be guessing unless you have one of these devices. Unfortunately, you probably don't. So if you're going to be buying a patch cord, it would probably make a whole lot of sense to buy a patch cord that doesn't require a DSX-8000 and the training in order to use it to make sure that every single patch cord you're using is actually suitable for the task. And one more consideration is PoE devices. PoE is being used much more frequently these days. Do you really want a bad patch cord powering up a camera or a Wi-Fi access point? What's that going to do to the power delivery to that device? I'm not sure I'd like to know the answer to that question because uh, who wants to replace a $200 access point because your, your patch cord was bad? So that pretty well sums up. The vast majority of patch cords out there, 75% are bad on patch cord testing out of the bag, out of the manufacturer. And that is including large manufacturers and common manufacturers. It also underscores the level of testing and care that went into developing our patch cords and why our patch cords are suitable not just from cooking up one piece of equipment to another that are powered, but also use in a structured cabling system where you have two patch cords and a permanent link in the middle. And that is probably the most critical spot to make sure that you've got a good patch cord. So with us, there's no guessing. They're guaranteed. They're under forever warranty and we guarantee that they pass. So with that, I'm going to say, please leave some comments below. What bad experiences have you had with patch cords? I'd love to hear your stories because I've got stories too. I'm sure we've all got stories about this. So please leave a comment below, subscribe to our channel, give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down as you see fit, and you have a great day and happy networking. Looking for your next Sure Cable adventure? We've got some awesome content in our Cable Academy down below. And if you're looking for some fun videos, check them out over here. All right, go for another adventure.